up there. <coughs> I'll tell you later. Uh, but there it is. Yadyapi, Yadyapi, Say, Mukti, Haya, Panchaparakara, Salokya, Samitya, Sarupya, Sarasti, Sayujya, Ara, Yadyapi, Say, Mukti, Haya, Panchaparakara, Salokya, Shashti Sayucha Ara Yayati Say Mukti Haya Pancha Parakara Salukya Samitya Sarukya Sashti Sayucha Ara and Sayujya. Please repeat. There are five kinds of liberation. Salokya, Samitya, Sarupya, Sarshti and Sayujya. Yes, this is Matthew 6, 266, and I was actually supposed to read the previous two verses, so I'll just quickly read that translation of those. The Bhattacharya continued. The impersonalists who do not accept the transcendental form of the Lord, Sri Krishna, and the demons who are always engaged in blaspheming and fighting with him, are punished by being merged into the Brahman effulgence. But that does not happen to the person engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. Then comes this verse. Purport. Salakya means that after material liberation, one is promoted to the planet where the Supreme Personality of Godhead resides. Samipya means remaining an associate of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sarupya means 
attaining a four-handed form exactly like that of the Lord. Sarshti means attaining opulences like those of the Supreme Lord, and Sayujja means merging into the Brahmani fountains of the Lord. These are the five types of liberation. Hare Krishna, so I'm so happy to be back here again after such an extended absence. Um, and I hope I can say something which is useful to you because um, when I read this verse I realized I knew absolutely nothing about these five types, well, at least four of them. We hear a lot about Sayuja all the time, how terrible it is and how we should avoid that. But um, very rarely do we hear anything about the other four and uh, so I thought, okay, well, let me try to research and find out more. And I didn't really find out that much. Um, with the help of Govinda Prabhu here, I've got a few quotes which I'll share with you from various um, shastras. And um, let's see if we can make, uh, you know, go a bit deeper into this subject. So when I first um, read it, thought about it, some questions came up um, regarding these liberations. So what is the distinctions between them? You know, if you attain Salokya, you've gone to the Vaikuntha planet. So why am I not associating with the Lord? Am I associating with the Lord, which is a different one of these uh, liberations? Uh, Samipya is, you know, to have the Lord's uh, personal association. Um, or if I have Sarupya, um, which is a form exactly like the Lord, well then, wouldn't I have Sarshti, which means his opulences uh, as well? But um, apparently not, because these are distinct and separate forms of liberation. Um, so I thought, well, maybe you get all four if you go there, you know, four for the price of one, if you manage to achieve liberation. Um, so that was a question that I, I have a look at. Um, if you get one, what determines which one you get? You know, um, as we'll hear shortly, you attain these liberations by rigid adherence to your sadhana and um, following the ritualistic principles, etc. So then you'll get one of them. <laughs> Which one? You know, why, why would I get Salukya and not Sarupya or, you know, like that? So if it is, do you only get one or maybe you get all four? Um, and if someone has a desire to attain any of these, which we're told not to do, uh, but is it material to desire you know, liberation to the Vaikuntha planet sounds pretty good. Isn't that what we're after? We want to get out of this material world, right? Um, and attain Krishna's association. But actually devotees reject them, we're told. So the question is, why? Why would they reject something like that? You know, to go and associate with Lord Narayan in the spiritual world. Um, wouldn't that be nice? Um, <laughs> so let's move on. Uh, so here's a quote from um, the Bhagavatam, seventh canto. Different persons achieve different types of mukti, sayujya, salokya, sarupya, samipya, and sarshti, according to their own intense desire, which is called bhava. So what I understood from this is that um, you don't attain all four, necessarily. Um, you attain one of them. And that depends on your desire. Intense desire is called bhava, your bhava. Um, and, you know, smaran bhava. So, so when, whatever you think of at the time of death, your bhava will determine your next body. So if you're absorbed in thoughts of the Lord, that's where you'll go. But if you're absorbed in thoughts of him in a particular way, uh, that's what you'll achieve. So, um, so somehow or another, um, some kind of bhava will get you salokya, that will, you know, you're in intensely desiring to go to the planet where the Lord resides. Um, or you want to have a form like his. Oh, I'd like to have a forearm form exactly like Narayan. I mean, I'm just, uh, you know, I don't really understand it, as I said from the very beginning. Um, but it appears that this is what this verse is saying. 
something along those lines that uh, depending on your desire you will attain um, one of these liberations which brings me back to one of the other questions I raised earlier which is is it not then is it not kind of material I mean if I desire anything um, it's considered uh, material we just want what Krishna wants right you know if Krishna wants us to go to hell we'll go there <laughs> if we're sufficiently advanced enough uh, or if he wants us to go to heaven or if he wants us to go to Vaikuntha whatever he wants that's, that's supposed to be our mood isn't it so, so how could you have a bhava that you know you want to achieve one of these liberations who has that you know is it, it, it I mean it doesn't seem to be the Gaudiya Vaishnavs maybe it's the Sri Vaishnavs I don't know I don't want to speak for them I think they believe that Narayan is the ultimate goal, um, but um, I don't know exactly, you know, what their practice is or everything, anything. So these are questions which are open. We can discuss them in a moment. Perhaps some of you here might have some insights, might have seen some chastras that I haven't actually yet seen that give us more information. So um, here's another quote from the seventh canto. Vaishnavas attain the liberations of Sarupya, Salukya, Sarshti, and Samipya, whereas the Mayavadis are supposed to attain the liberation known as Sayujya. Sayujya Mukti, however, is not very secure, whereas Sarupya, Salukya, Sarshti, and Samipya Muktis are most certain. So this raises a few uh, questions. So it, a Prabhupada says they are supposed to attain the Mayavadis, the liberation. So that suggests to me that they don't actually attain it. Or maybe they, are, they would like to attain it, or they try to, that's their goal. Um, it, it seems that it's not that they do attain, you know, that Prabhupada could say they attain this. Um, so maybe they do, maybe they don't, and we'll look at some quotes on that in a second. Um, but he also says that it's not very secure. Um, so why would you think it's not very secure? I'd have to throw it out, get you guys thinking a little bit. What? I beg your pardon? Because they will come back. Because they will come back. Why will they come back? It's not permanent. It's not permanent. Brahman. Like when you are in a Brahman, you're dealing with the Lord. Right. It's not permanent duration. After a certain time, you'll come back. After some time, you come back. It's, it's, not, it's not a permanent situation, Brahman. There's, there's one place where Srila Prabhupada says that Brahman is a fallen condition, right? So, um, so that's why it's not secure. Let's have a look uh, at, um, this is from the purport of that verse. Although the servants of Lord Vishnu, Narayan, in the Vaikuntha planets are equally situated with the Lord, the devotees there know very well that the Lord is the master, whereas they are the servants. So this mentality of knowing that I am the servant of God, which is, um, He's in this purport saying that this is the secure uh, position, um, whereas those who attain Brahman aren't necessarily thinking along those lines. Um, as we saw in the previous verse, actually, to these, this 266 in the sixth chapter, which is the liberation of Sarva Burma, and this is Sarva Burma actually speaking after he um, was converted. Uh, he was previously an aspirant of Brahman, of, you know, he wanted to attain in personal liberation and then after he had his his uh, epiphany and he, he was transformed um, he hated the very thought of it liberation and he's now he's he's very knowledgeable he knows all the scriptures and he's speaking about the um, about the different kinds of liberation and, and how horrible Sayuja was and we we heard him say earlier that this is a punishment that to, to be put into the Brahman um, that's where the demons go. Um, and the demons hate Krishna. Uh, and we'll see in, in, in a moment that Prabhupada also says the impersonalists are exactly the same as the demons. Um, they hate Krishna. So they attain the same place as the, um, as the demons. Uh, here's the famous verse uh, where this is discussed. 
The impersonalists who take much trouble in penance and austerity for self-liberation may approach the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, but ultimately, because of not being situated in devotional service, they glide down again to the material world to undergo another term of material existence. I love that term, glide down. You see, imagine them coming out of the Brahma Jyoti, you know, gliding back again into the material world. Ravad. This is confirmed as follows. Yea, nye revin daksha vimuktamani nas tayasta bhava na vishuddha buddhaya aruya krishchena parampadam tata pajantyadu nadrita yushmad angraya. So this is the key verse that Prabhupada always quotes when he's talking about the impersonalists. And as Mataji was just saying, um, they're considered avishuddha buddhaya, not very intelligent. And um, because they haven't attained shelter at the parampadam, the lotus feet of the Lord, they drop back down again after some time. The Brahman position is not very secure because ultimately it's not satisfying um, to us because we are in fact designed to serve God. We are his parts and parcels. We're meant to serve him. So if we're doing anything other than that, um, we're not fulfilling our purpose um, and we, we can't be satisfied. You know, as long as we uh, we were suspended in the Brahman, um, enjoying um, the freedom of not being under the modes of nature, of no longer uh, having to suffer birth and death and so many things. So for some time that's very enjoyable. Brahma compares it to like taking off a very tight shoe you've been wearing for a very long time. And you take it off and you're like, ah, oh, oh, that's so wonderful. That's so, that's, that's, that's bliss. <laughs> but after some time, that wears off, you know, or it's like a very poor man who all his life has struggled and suddenly he wins the lottery um, and oh, I'm a millionaire, oh, it's incredible and he looks at the, you know, the bank statement, yes, it's true, I'm a millionaire but how long is that going to satisfy you, you know, just knowing you've got the money sooner or later you've got to spend it, so being in the Brahman is something like that, um, you are enjoying but it, it, it has its limits and eventually you fall down again. Um, so this is where the demons go and this is where the impersonalists go. Prabhupada says they cannot tolerate the supremacy of the Lord, they want to be equal to him. So they, he equates them to the demons. So that's Sayyidja and yeah fair enough we won't aspire for that one. <laughs> that's plainly not very good. Uh, but what about the other four? Um, so here, my devotees who are always satisfied to be engaged in my loving service are not interested even in the four principles of liberation, Salukya, Sarupya, Samipya and Sarshti, although these are automatically achieved by their service. Um, so I thought, well, what does that mean, automatically achieved? Um, does it mean that by rendering service to Krishna, I will achieve these salokya, sarupya, samipyas and sharshtis. That's what it sounds like, doesn't it? Uh, but I don't think it means that. Um, because in the purple, Prabhupada discusses this point. Um, so this is a quote from a Bill Mong Thakur. Another one that Srila Prabhupada very much liked to cite um, is uh, Mukti Sayam Mukuli Tanjali Sevate Sma Dharmata Kama Kataya Samaya Pratiksha. Bilba Mangal Thakur realized that if one develops his natural devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Mukti stands before him with folded hands to offer all kinds of service. In other words, the devotee is already liberated. There is no need for him to aspire for different types of liberation. Pure devotee automatically achieves liberation even without desiring it. So what I understand this to be saying, um, Srila Prabhupada uh, is uh, uh, quoting this verse, Bill, what Bill Mangal is saying um, is that Mukti stands, we'll call it Anjali, and Anjali is like the folded palms, is standing before you with folded palms. Um, what does that mean exactly? You know, are, are you sort of able to see the goddess of Mukti or something? I don't think it means that. I think it, he, what he's saying is that 
um, you're already liberated. In fact, there's a verse to that effect. Who knows that verse? I'm sure Govinda knows that verse from the... Is it from the um, Iha Yasya? Yeah. 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 Jivan Mukta Sa Uchite Jai. Shishi Guk, Radha Guk, Lananda Sita Ram Lakshman Haraman. Yeah. Let's have a look at it. I think, I think I've got it up. Right? Yeah, here it is. Uh, Rupa Goswami Nithvaki Rasamrita Sindhu describes this as follows. Iha Yasya, etc. Person acting in Krishna consciousness, or in other words, in the service of Krishna, with his body, mind, intelligence, and words, is a liberated person, even within the material world, although he may be engaged in many so-called material activities. So, uh, as far as liberation goes, this is um, automatically attained if you are um, engaged in Krishna consciousness. So, this is another discussion that this this uh, would um, bring up. Uh, exactly what does it mean to be Kamana um, Manasakira, uh, Hare Dasye Kamana Manasakira, with the activities, mind, and words always engaged in the service of the Lord. Does that, am I in that category? Um, you know, it's like sometimes I talk nonsense and uh, <laughs> sometimes I think of things other than Krishna. I'll make a confession in front of all the Vaishnavas. I <laughs> think of Maya. Um, so I don't think that includes me. So um, I, I think, you know, when you attain a certain level of Krishna consciousness, and that's a discussion that could be had, whether it means Nishta um, or Ashakti. Ashakti means Brahma Bhuta, right? Liberation um, and attraction to Krishna. Uh, I think at that point we have to have some attraction for Krishna, but we're not going to get into this discussion right now uh, in order to be fully engaged the whole time. If we don't have some initial attraction, uh, a shakti for Krishna, then we're going to still be attracted to Maya. So from time to time, Maya's going to drag us away from the path, and we're going to have to drag ourselves back again. Um, so we're not quite liberated. But when we reach that point, that's, that's the point of liberation. Okay, so let's talk a bit more about the other four. Although Salokya, Sarshti, Samipya, and Sarupya are devoid of the desire for enjoyment, still they are undesirable. As soon as a living entity becomes free from material bondage by the strength of devotion, he immediately attains liberation. That liberation, however, is not the principal fruit of bhakti. The pure love for Krishna attained by liberated souls is the principal fruit of sadhana bhakti. So this is one of uh, the quotes that Sriman Govinda Prabhu sent me. <laughs> this is from the Bhakti Aloka by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Um, so it brought up a question uh, for, for us, which is, why, is it un why are they undesirable? What is undesirable about going to the Vaikuntha planets and being liberated with Krishna, or with Lord Narayan in this case. Why, why do you think, what, what would be your opinion, any of you, why this is not something to be desired? Because it says they are devoid of desire for enjoyment, so it's not material. That's what I understand that to mean. So if it's not material, it must be spiritual. And if it's spiritual, well, there's nothing wrong with it, right? <laughs> Do you need it? Oh, he's got it, yeah. Oh, yeah, the people on the, uh, the Zoom, yeah, give it to Mataji. I'm just thinking that maybe they don't, they don't desire liberation because they already liberated. It's like it's like Vaikuntha's state of consciousness. It's like Sirla Prabhupada was already liberated by being here. So he doesn't really care about this type of liberation because he's already with Krishna all the time here. So you're saying that they're already experiencing a state of, of liberation, so they're not, they're not desiring it. Yeah, that's a good one. Do you want to pass to them and then to that message? <laughs> To project, project. Um, the interesting thing about uh, liberation 
is 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 um, you you can say it's it's if you have um, an aspiration that way for any of these forms, um, it's sort of like a, it's sprung upon you. It seems you know because it's not. Um, an aspiration, it, it, um, as I come to understand it, but uh, if there is such a, a thing, um, uh, a, a desire, then uh, this uh, uh, aspiration for liberation is um, somebody who let me let me get out of here uh, from this material existence. Um, uh, I, I, for the, uh, what is it? It's eternity and knowledge. And, uh, but the blissful, um, you know, which is the Gaudiya part, the service aspect, um, may not be there. It, it's, um, you see that you're a servant of Krishna, but you're not necessarily having a relationship with him. Um, so, um, you know, you're there um, uh, in um, company of, you know, just to, to be in the company of. And it's always association. It's, it's nice to be um, with those people um, that uh, you, you feel akin to. So if you're all together there, um, there there's that, that bliss of togetherness, but not, not necessarily a, a service bliss. Mm. That you experience when you the soul gives, right? You know, yeah. it's more of uh, you could say um, almost like friendship with each other. You know, though though you're there for Krishna or, or um, who, whoever is the supreme in in that state, um, it's almost like um, uh, it's uh, you could say. Um, yeah, you just got this togetherness feeling and, and bliss of being together. And nice, yeah. Thank that's, you. That's where I see it. It seems yeah. to be separate from this, this right. serving each other. Okay, thanks, yeah. yeah. I'm going to pass it to that lady while I just quickly reflect back what he said there, that um, Prajna Bruce saying that there may not be the, um, you know, this knowledge and eternity, but not necessarily bliss, which comes from service to the Lord. And that mood of service may not be there when you're in Vaikuntha with Narayan. Yeah, you may just, you know, be um, enjoying the company, uh, being in the association of other like-minded people, like do other devotees um, in that atmosphere, and admiring the Lord. Actually, the primary um, mood in Vaikuntha is Shantaras, and, and it sometimes develops a little bit. It can go as far as Gaurava Sakya, which is friendship with own reverence. Did you want to say something? Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhuji. Um, in the nectar of devotion, we were learning that Krishna very easily grants um, liberation, but he does not grant um, devotional service. So mm. the mood is that to capture the heart of Krishna, and you cannot capture the heart of Krishna just by liberation. Because as Persian Prabhu was saying, there's like, what are you going to do in Vaikuntha and Golaktam? if you don't have that mood to serve, because if you love somebody, you want to serve them. Mm. So in order to capture the heart of um, Krishna, you have to um, love your service. You have to mm. have that mood of loving That's service. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he's saying that um, Krishna easily gives liberation, but um, his own devotional service is not so easily um, given because that captures him, captures his heart. So that is really what we want. Um, so let me move on and uh, we have um, when one associates with a pure devotee he becomes so elevated that he does not aspire even for sarshti, sarupya, samipya or salukya because he feels that such liberation is a kind of sense gratification. Pure devotees do not ask anything from the Lord for their personal benefit even if offered personal benefits, pure devotees do not accept them because their only desire is to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead by transcendental loving service, which is what we were just hearing. So, um, this is Prabhupada and he's saying, um, he feels that such liberation is a kind of sense gratification. So, 
although it isn't. <laughs> he feels like it is. Because <laughs> um, he's desiring something, you know, for his own uh, enjoyment, ultimately. Um, so all they want to do is satisfy Krishna by transcendental loving service. So this is a very elevated mood, um, you know, that, that we're aspiring to attain, that we have no separate desire other than what Krishna wants. Um, and this is a pure devotee. So uh, it's likely that, I know myself, I'm still contaminated by karma and gyan and problems that, you know, I'm aspiring, I'd like to be free of misery. I'm not very fond of suffering. So I think uh, <laughs> it'd be nice to get free of it. But that's a material desire. Um, liberationism is actually a material desire. And even these four, which are not material desires, it seems, um, are, are felt like that in uh, the mind of the pure devotee because of his mood of wanting to please Krishna. Um, so how do we attain these uh, liberations? By karma mishra bhakti, one is elevated to the celestial kingdom. By jnana mishra bhakti, one is able to merge in the Brahman effulgence. And by yoga mishra bhakti, one is able to realize the omnipotency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But pure bhakti does not depend on karma, jnana, or yoga, for it simply consists of loving affairs. The liberation of the bhakta, therefore, which is called not just mukti, but vimukti, surpasses the five other kinds of liberation, sayujya, sarupya, salokya, sarshti, and samipya. Um, so yeah, if we still have Kama Mishra Bhakti means we have some material desires. Generally speaking, demigods are held up to be examples of that. Um, and they are, of course, in Svagaloka. And if we practice Bhakti with that desire, with some material desire to achieve something, we want name or fame, adoration, followers, wealth, or whatever, um, then we'll go to Svaga. Uh, and, and if we're desiring liberation, like we want, we realize, well, everything in the material world is ultimately pain. Um, like the Buddhists say, existence is suffering. So <laughs> they, they want to get out. So that would be your mood if you finally concluded, wherever you look, there's nothing but misery. This world is full of suffering. Let me get out of here. That's Gyana Mishra Bhakti. Um, that will take you to the Brahman effulgence. Uh, Yoga Mishra Bhakti. Um, practice of yoga, um, sankhya, and um, ashtanga, uh, you'll come to realize the omnipotency, of, you'll realize God within the heart. Um, I've got a quote about this a bit further on, actually, the, um, <coughs> about the ashtanga yogis, uh, that they actually, um, they also ultimately become impersonalists, so um, that's also not so great. But the bhakta, um, Achieve vibhuti, uh, complete liberation, which is superior, surpasses the other five kinds. So, why does it surpass? What is it about it that surpasses the other kinds of liberation? Um, what would you say? I mean, why, why is it better? Is it more blissful? Um, is that what we want? More bliss? Uh, we want all the bliss we can get, right? <laughs> uh, but um, we shouldn't be desiring anything, right? Bliss or otherwise. We, we, we just want to please God, huh? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the bliss. It's, um, it's in the last verse of Shikshastaka. Even if you handle me roughly by your embrace, or make me broken hearted by not being present before me, Right. You're completely free to do anything and any, anything. For um, uh, uh, that is my happiness. Mm. You know. So actually, even if I'm unhappy, and that makes you happy, that's my happiness. Right. Yeah. That's it's to totally self-sacrificing. Like, I mean, you could say the gopis or Radharani. You know. You know. It's. Uh, that's it. That's the topmost, yeah. yeah. Thank you. 
Do I pass it over to him? Go and look at it. Kind of short time. But yeah, you're saying that um, the last verse of the uh, Shikshastika explains, uh, you know, Lord, Lord Chaitanya is saying that even if you, you, you know, make me broken hearted by not being present before me, you trail my head, it doesn't matter what you do, I'm, I'm always going to, going to love you. You know, and it's so completely it's selfless. In You're in bliss at that point, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, I can't even imagine it. Yeah. Do you want to say something? <laughs> Here's how I'm looking at it. It's kind of like a question. Is it possible to have a, a, a mood that is different from your form? For example, if you have a forearm form, can you like worship Krishna in pure love? Or is it the case that because you have a certain mood, you have to have a form that matches that mood? Because, see, we, we can answer this. This question is very difficult to answer. What, what is undesirable about, about that? Because I'm looking at it thinking, well, there's nothing undesirable because our mood is our mood of bhakti is what is actually the most important thing. But we know Krishna says, I shvarya shatila prema nahi mora prita. I'm not satisfied if you worship me with, with opulence. So we know that our mood has to fully satisfy Krishna. So there's no what there shouldn't be any attachment to opulence. So my question is, if you if you have sharshni and, and sarupya like in a vaikuntha form, is that attachment to Aishvarya? So you say. Um, must uh, the first thing you were saying must our form correspond to the mood yeah. that we want to serve the Lord? Because um, if it did, then is that, this a that trans that question? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Spiritually speaking. <laughs> yeah. Um, go ahead. For me, it's just trying to find an answer to the question. It's, it's clear from the scriptures that Lord Krishna likes the mood of the residents of Vrindavan. Yeah. But what's not clear is, can you have a forearm form? Can you have a, 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 a form like N N Lord Narayan and yeah. still have the mood of someone from Vrindavan? So can you, um, if you want to serve Krishna in the, in the mood of the Vrijbasis, right? Yeah. Could you still have a forearm form or, or the Sarshti, those, those are other liberations, um, and still retain that, that mood, have that mood of service? Uh, what, what do you think? I don't know, and I don't even know what Sarupya means. <laughs> does, it, does it just mean the forearm form? This is what I was saying in the beginning. <laughs> it's tough to work it out. You have Saru Sarupya in, in Vrindavan. Do the cover boys have? Is it Sarupya? They have I mean, I understand that in Vrindavan you can assume any form you like. You know that the, the, your, your form is actually two-handed human, but if you want to serve him uh, as a blade of grass, you can become a blade of grass. If you want to serve him as a, as a cow, you, you take that form. So you, you can, any form, you, you have the complete freedom to shapeshift. Yeah, so you could take a forearm form if you want, but why would you? I mean, it would be a bit rasa bus in, in Goloka, I, I expect, I don't know. I mean, when the gopis saw Lord Narayan, they weren't attracted to him. They had forearms, but um, that's a good question. I mean, the, 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 there's so many questions that's brought up for me which I can't really answer. And, you know. I think Smart Harry might have answered it, because in this world we see people, if they have a particular mood, they will get surgery mm. in a form to match their mood. That's true. So it seems you can't split the two. So, so you, 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 can, you can have different, a, a mood which is different from the body that, your spiritual body that, that you're I exhibiting. Yeah, okay. Boo -boo. Give him the mic. If, if we understand that this class discussing these things has been going on, has happened since the Acharyas wrote these words, that it's part of a manual for understanding. Mm. So, when it says it surpasses, that is for the benefit of the aspirant student who is trying to focus his spiritual path. So they're advocating, don't be attracted to liberation, don't be attracted to the different times, don't be attracted to the four and far. This particular school that we are in mm. is a school of worshiping Krishna. Mm. Now it may be I have a very sweet god brother who has gone over to the Sri Sampradaya and um, 
he acknowledges Prabhupada, but Prabhupada has taught him and now he's attracted to Narayan. That's right. He, he's initiated by them, he's attracted and so on and so on. He's a very nice devotee, he's my friend, he's very sympathetic, he understands Gaudiya philosophy, but he's not attracted to it. Yes. So I would suggest that from an aspirant, I, I feel the whole of spiritual life is based on intention. Hmm. What is your intention? What is your aspiration? Hmm. So then from that being introduced, going through the stages, becoming pure, not having material desires and so on and so on, I feel that slowly one will become fixed and will, one will become determined mm. in one's bhava, in one's taste, in one's rasa. So I don't see how one would end up in a forehand form if one had another intention, if one had another aspiration, if one had a... I, I don't see that that, that that would happen. Yeah. That, that one could then have to be... I sure. feel that it's a very, very, very long path. Mm -hmm. I think much longer than we realize mm. to to attain those yeah. positions. That level. And yeah. I think once I, I think one will have figured all those questions and doubts and just like my god brother at this stage is as, as an conditioned living entity, he, he he's attracted to Narayan. Mm, yeah. So I don't see that one would attain by contact and say, hey, hold on, what am I doing here? <laughs> that's a terrible mistake. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's my view. Yeah, you're saying that, um, you know, that, that this is a, an ancient kind of, this, the, 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 you know, the Acharyas have really thought this through and this, there's been a lot of kind of discussion on this um, and really you're saying, you know, we're just at the early stages and and we're trying to understand it from a position, a perspective of a conditioned soul who's really just embarking on the path of back to We've got a long way to go. But as you go forward, um, gradually uh, things become clearer as you make progress, as you do your sadhana, um, and you will be attracted to a certain way of yeah, worshipping the Lord, a certain mood. Um, and even you're saying like that, uh, our mutual friend, I know who you mean, um, is, you know, attracted to Narayan. Um, even though he was initiated by Prabhupada, he knows all the Gaudiya philosophy, he knows everything about Lord Chaitanya, but still he's more attracted to Narayan, and, you know, even before he's liberated. So, yeah, um, it, and what to speak of when you actually do become liberated, then, um, it, you know, things will be very clear that this is your mood, this is how you want to serve the Lord. And uh, you know your eternal rasa will be manifest. I feel. Yeah, sounds good, Prabhu. Um, yeah, no, just to kind of corroborate that point, um, in the Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada uh, mentioned the purport that uh, you know it's best to focus on. The, it, Prabhupada mentions I'm, I'll find the verse, but he mentions that there are many forms of the Lord. And he mentions that Ram Avatar, Narasimhadev, and so on and so forth. But it's best to um, focus on Krishna as the blue-eyed, uh, blue, blue, blue boy, you know, with the flute and everything. Um, but then it's also mentioned that if you focus as the focal point is Krishna, because he's like the, you know, the source of all the incarnations. If you do have a certain um, inclination toward a certain devotee then through the process, Krishna will guide you towards you know, the form that you have that relationship with. So similar to what Samarhari Prabhu was saying about his friend, and also in the CC, we've got the example of uh, Murari Gupta, mm -hmm. who was told to chant the holy names of the Lord. But then through that, obviously he realized that actually, um, you know, he's, he's uh, Ram Bhakta, because he's, he's Lord Hanuman. And so, uh, but still the focal point was, you know, Krishna, the holy names. And so, it, so you focus initially, and then through through that, Krishna will guide you towards which is your um, person that you should be having relationship in, which mm. which way. Right. <laughs> so you, you, yeah, you refer as opposed as opposed to going to another form initially, right, of Krishna. In other words, like go to the center, the focal point, mm. which is Krishna, and then if you do have a relationship with another form of Krishna, mm. you'll be guided accordingly, as okay. opposed to initially going to another form based yeah, on your own yeah. mental concoction. Okay. Yeah, so you're saying there's a purple, I think it's in the Gita, right? Um, I forget where it is, where Prabhupada says that we should just concentrate on Krishna 
the, 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 the uh, you know the two arm form playing his flute yeah. and everything and he, not Nishingadev etc etc so all the different other incarnations he names so he's saying well that, that doesn't preclude the possibility we do worship Nishinga in various countries we do anyway yeah why Cause yeah because he's got why to protect his con, that's <laughs> probably what I said. <laughs> protect us and our back tea. <laughs> but, but yeah, but the point I think he's making here is that um, uh, you, you should nevertheless concentrate on Krishna and worship him. And as you get purified by worshiping Krishna, you may, there may develop um, a mood of attraction to another form of the law. Um, and, uh, and then the law will guide you toward your Ishta Devata, so whoever it may be that you're attracted to. Um, but initially, we chant Hare Krishna, we worship Krishna, and that may evolve and develop it, of it uh, you know, spontaneously. Because even like we were just saying that, yeah, it's true, we, do, we worship other forms of the Lord, but if you look at our worship, the Krishna is always the focal point. We yeah. worship Narasimha Devas and to, you know, to, uh, to uh, appreciate certain aspects of Krishna. We worship Lord Ram to appreciate certain aspects of Krishna, Lord is the main focus. Yeah. And so it's always like that should be that pre like preliminary preliminary, preliminary um, yeah. uh, mode, modus operandi. Right. Yeah. So you're saying even though we do have other forms of the Lord it, 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 within our worship, like Lord Ram is here and the Shingadev's in some temples and uh, you know like that, still the focus is Krishna and we appreciate other aspects of Krishna through these other avatars. And other people who are initially attracted to other forms of the Lord also join this song to focus on Krishna, especially in India. Yeah. There's many people from different sampradayas, from different groups, yeah. who, who feel attracted to, they come to Vrindavan and tell this is just amazing, this is what I want to do. Yeah. I'll just say that for the benefit of the uh, people who didn't have the mic. But um, yeah, some people are attracted to other forms of Krishna, and they come, uh, uh, you know, uh, initially they come to the temple, um, and then they become attracted to Krishna. Actually, that's a good point too, because you mentioned Murari Gupta, and you know he, he couldn't, didn't change, and same at Anupam, right? There's another example of that. But there was another one, the Brahmin in South India, who, ch who was chanting Ram, 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 and then after he met Lord Chaitanya, he started chanting Hare Krishna. He lost interest in chanting the name of Ram, right? So maybe it can change sometimes. Did you want to say something, Matthew? Yeah, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Prabhu, I just had a question on one of the uh, initial quotes that you shared. Maybe if you can just scroll back. It was talked about being equally situated with the Lord. The word that was used there was equally situated. Yeah. So I'm just thinking that uh, does it mean that in these forms of liberation, we lose that master-servant relationship because wherever we are in the universe, that relationship is eternal. But I mean, is it right to think that uh, mm -hmm. in these for, uh, liberations, because Prabhupada uses the word equally situated. That's right. Um, so, what does he mean by that here? And do we stand the risk of? Uh, because that's the whole beauty of bhakti. The whole. Uh, yeah. I, I, I can't find it. This one. I, I remember, yeah, it does. Yeah. It, 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 here it is, yeah. Um, so your, your question here is that it says equally situated with the Lord. Yeah. Um, because the devotees there know very well that the Lord. Whereas devotees realize that the Lord is the master and we're the servants. Um, so the question is. Uh, is is that mood lost in in by contact? Yeah. Yeah. That's the I, I mean that's the pinnacle of our yes. relationship. Because we're always eternally the Lord's servant. So, yeah. but it, it's in some way in, in by contact that we may not be aware of that that that, we, yeah. that mood is. That's a very good question. <laughs> and actually, um, I, I I'm not, probably not going to get that that, uh, that far today. I've got some other quotes here where. Um, Devotees will accept, it says sometimes they will accept the, the four kinds of liberation if there's a chance for serving Krishna. So that seems to indicate that there may not be a chance for serving, even with those liberations. Um, so what you're saying is possibly correct. Uh, you, you know, the, um, why would they, how, how would it be possible for those four kinds of liberation not to include service to, to the Lord? 
I mean, you achieve that position by service. But yet when you get there, you may not be able to serve him in that position. So, I, I, you know, I wanted to explore that. I mean, I don't, I don't fully understand it. Um, we're running out of time. Uh, but I, you know, you quoted that about, I was going to read that quote from, the, you can see it up there now, that the Lord's not attracted to Aishwarya Bhav, right, uh, Krishna. Um, but um, uh, there is two kinds of, um, yeah, devotion to the Supreme Person is untrue, unless he is assured of having service to the Lord. A pure devotee does not accept any kind of liberation, whether it be residence on the same planet, equal opulence, proximity, having the same form, or monistic union, even though the Lord may offer it. So, unless he's assured of having service, he won't accept even samipya, which is direct um, association with the Lord. So, how could that be possible? And it, it seems that in, in Vaikuntha, really you're just overawed by the Lord's splendor, by his greatness, by, you know, which, which you can just go on forever admiring him. <laughs> he's, he's so glorious and wonderful that you can, you can just remain in the spiritual world in the Vaikuntha planets, just, you know, soaking up the greatness of God. In, in the mood of Aishwarya Baba, but you're not actually doing active service. Because the real equality that devotee achieves where he feels like the Lord is is equal to me or is less than me, you know, <laughs> is in Goloka, the only place, right, in Vraja, that, that the devotee has that mood of, of really being equal to God and, and wrestling with him or, you know, <laughs> climbing on his shoulders and, that, you know, that kind of thing. Do you want to pass the uh, microphone to Prabhu here? In, in another place, it says to be here. Was three. Uh, 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 we have uh, we have three steps of God realization. So the Brahma, Brahma Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Mm. So, so, how does it uh, does it mean that we have to start with? with Brahman, and then we go to Paramatma before we understand Bhagavan. Okay, yeah, you're saying that um, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan are the three phases of understanding God, the three levels. So, do we have to go through those progressively, realizing Brahman, then Paramatma, then Bhagavan? Um, in, in Krishna consciousness, do we do that? Yeah? Yeah, we, we, we do. We realize that all aspects of God, initially, we, Brahman, it, it comes at the stage of liberation from, you know, Ashakti, I said, when we begin to become attracted to God. And we become aware of his all-pervasive presence throughout. We see God everywhere. We see, actually, we see Krishna everywhere, Krishna's hand in everything. And that's like Paramatma realization. And eventually, face to face, God reveals himself to us. <laughs> that's... If we're very fortunate indeed, then that will come. Um, the, the, here I just, uh, thank you Prabhu. Uh, although the aforementioned five types of mukti are worthy of rejection by devotees, the four types of Salokya, Samipya, Sarupya and Sarshti are not com completely adverse to Bhakti. According to the difference in a particular devotee's eligibility to receive uh, them, these four types of mukti assume two forms. Swasukha Aishvarya Pradhanakari, uh, that which bestows transcendental happiness and opulence, and Prema Seva Pradhanakari, which bestows loving transcendental service. So it seems that, and I read this in Jaiva Dharma as well, and I, I, I couldn't find it, but um, where um, the Thakur was talking about the two kinds of devotees in Vaikuntha, and this is, I think, talking about the same thing, uh, Rupa Goswami in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. There's the Swastuka Aishvarya Pradhanaka, which I think is the mood of Aishvarya Bhava, of really, you know, I mean, there's all, everyone's got that mood uh, in Vaikuntha, but this is where you're simply absorbed in the opulence, enjoying the opulence. And, and that's there in the Jaiva Dharma, it talks about this, the different kinds of devotees in Vaikuntha, and one class of them are enjoying the opulence only of Vaikuntha. Um, it occurred to me that may be where we came from because we were 
absorbed in that opulence and we thought, oh, let me try some of that opulence, let me enjoy it. <laughs> but anyway, that's the speculation. But the other thing is, prema seva pradhanakari is prema, so there's, in, even in Vaikuntha, there is prema, but it's a different kind of prema. And, and the service, but the service is in the mood of Aishvarya, of always, um, you know, admiring the greatness of God. And, and I, I didn't read those quotes, but Krishna is less attracted by that. He's not attracted by this mood of Aishvarya. He's attracted by pure, spontaneous love where you just take him as your most intimate friend, um, you know, and, or, or lover. Uh, Prabhupada gives a nice example of um, Lloyd George. You, you heard that example, right? Of the uh, British Prime Minister who was like, you know, big man and, and one day um, he, he was in his office and someone was outside, a big, big uh, foreign leader was waiting to see him. And, um, and he, you know, he waited for a long time and, and then he thought, what's going on in there? And he asked the secretary to have a look. The secretary opened the door and he could see that. The Lloyd George was on, on the floor, on all fours, with his grandchild on his back. And he was playing, you know. <laughs> and he realized that that was a more enjoyable mood of pleasure for, you know, the Prime Minister than dealing with the big guys, you know, the, the official business in his capacity as the, as the Prime Minister, which certainly would give him some pleasure. You know, you're the big man, everyone's come to you, so... But not as much as playing with the little child, so... You know, that's more attractive. And we want to please Krishna as devotees. We want to please him in the best possible way, the way he most enjoys. So that's why we are aspiring for that mood and we're not interested in the, uh, in the moods of Aishvarya. Prabhu? Krishna, thank you. Um, with the deities, um, aren't we told to have a mood of awe and reverence towards them? Other than uh, the others? Yeah. So how, would, how, how does that yeah. work? Sri Prabhupada did say that. He said that we should um, worship them as Lakshmi Narayan, right? In the mood of to have the proper respect. You can't, I mean, as I understand it, you can't become intimate with someone until you fully understand who that person is. The greatness, you first have to appreciate that. It's like the Bhagavatam takes us step by step through those levels. Initially, you know, from the lotus feet of the Lord upwards till you finally come to the smiling face. And, and you have to know, you know, how great he is, the Shristi Leela, his creation pastimes, you know, how he's controlling the universe, how he's equal to everyone, you know, how he protects everyone. So all these different um, themes are there in the Bhagavatam and, uh, and they, you know, they awaken in us a realization of God and who he is and how great he is. And, um, and then we can get to that point of intimacy. So I think with worship of the deity, Prabhupada starts us at that point so that we have the right mood. And in time, it will develop into something um, more intimate, more familiar. That's the best I can do, unless anyone has any other thoughts on that. Prabhu? I actually think... Sometimes we get stuck in a false dichotomy. We think that if we're worshipping God in our reverence, somehow that we can't have Krishna at the same time. But when we consider the residents of Vrindavan, so in Vrindavan they all have a God that they worship. It's just it's just not Krishna. Right? So so they love Krishna as the boy. But then like Nanda Maharaj has got his Singha Dev or his Atokshida deity. So yeah. he's he's obviously doing some kind of worship to his deity and there's some kind of on reverence there and like so they, they pray to Krishna, they, they pray to God to save Krishna, right? So I don't think it's a false dichotomy to say we, we can't sort of have an on reverence mm. at the same time as loving Krishna because the two are seem to be coinciding in Vrindavan already. That's a nice point. Yeah, you're saying that um, why must there be one or the other? Um, that even the residents of Vrindavan um, are worshipping God. I mean they don't see Krishna as God. Um, they, they see him as their little boy or their lover or whatever, their friend. Um, but still, they, they're not atheists. <laughs> it's not like they think there is no God. Um, so Nanda Maharaj has got his Vishnu deity that he worships. And you know, then Shingadeva is worshiped, different deities are there. So that mood of worship will be um, Aishvarya. And um, so they've got both. You can have both. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Of course. 
Thank you. So I had a question in regards to like, um, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that you, uh, when, when you're studying through intelligence, you can worship Krishna and its service as well. But um, is there a difference? Like if we see everything as service, is there a difference? Because sometimes what happens is like if you're studying, you know, your false ego is going up and through that consciousness, then it becomes, um, about liberation, you know, just going back to Godhead because in order to develop a sort of taste for like love for Krishna, you need to have humility. But that's one question. Um, is everything, would it still be seen as service to Krishna or like, you know, the studying of the literature? Like, for example, let's say there's a devotee and they're doing a, like a very intense course, like Bhakti Vaibhav or something. And sometimes their focus is a lot on studying of the literatures and they can't give time to other services, like, I don't know, cleaning a temple or, you know, quality chanting of their round. Um, so will the studying of the, you know, of the books, the shastras, be seen as their attempt to, or liberation, like they're just, you know, the goal is liberation, or does Krishna consider that their consciousness is also loving devotional service? They're investing their time in studying the shastras. Okay. So you're saying, um, you spoke about studying, and in the Gita, Krishna says, uh, those who study this book, you know, the Gita, worship me with their intelligence. So that seems to be okay, you know, if I'm studying the Gita. Uh, but sometimes uh, we become like absorbed in study, like doing Bhakti Shashri, Bhakti Vaibhav, and you know, they're, they're quite intense. So we're fully absorbed. And could it be that there's a mood of like, I'm studying this, why? Because I want knowledge, because I want to get free of, you know, suffering, free of material existence. So that would be like a contamination. It may be that, that that's there, you know, the false ego and stuff. So uh, you're just asking um, about that. So and are you saying, um, is that a problem, that studying, could it be a problem? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, in, in, in response, I would say that um, we should view it as Shravanam Kirtanam, you know, that when we're studying Shastra, we're not Gyanis, we're not, we're, we're not trying to accumulate knowledge. Um, real knowledge comes to Dhami Buddha Yoga Tam. Krishna gives us that knowledge from within. Um, as a result of the hearing and chanting that we're doing. Um, so it's Sankirtan, you know, when, when we're st studying Shastra, we should be discussing it with others, reading and repeating what we've heard, um, and, and trying to assimilate that knowledge. It's, it's Sankirtan, it, and it's worship of the Lord, of course. Um, and, and we shouldn't have that mood of like, I want to be a big, learning person. Why would I want to be a big learning person? So I can show off, you know, <laughs> so I can, you know, demonstrate my knowledge to others. And yeah, that's a problem if, if that's what you're thinking. Uh, or I want to have the certificate, you know, and that way I can, I can, you know, advance my career path in ISKCON or something by getting this, uh, this qualification. So if we have those motives, yeah, that's a problem. But if we're thinking, this is hearing and chanting about the Lord. It's part of the angas of bhakti, um, and you know it's the yuga dharma, sankirtan yoga. Then yeah, that's that's great, you know, and and all knowledge will come by Krishna's grace. Thank you. Can I ask one more question? Okay. Um, you know, you mentioned that we're supposed to develop completely selfless love for Krishna, which is like sort of like unconditional love that you see, like, you know, maybe a mother will give a child. But this is like a really high level, like developing completely selfless love for Krishna. Because like sometimes you might be serving your spiritual master or serving Krishna. You're actually trying to serve yourself. It's like you're trying to progress. So how can we motivate ourselves to develop this really high level of completely selfless love. Because like even in the world, you know, like we see that everything is conditioned. Like as children, we grow up seeing that every, even relationships, maybe except one relation with your parents or like with the, with the mother, but most relationships are like conditioned. So that um, epitome of a completely selfless love is sometimes difficult to even see in the world. So how, how do we come to that stage if we don't have any understanding of it? Mm. Okay, um, you're saying that um, 
what we're aspiring to achieve is selfless, completely unconditional, pure love for Krishna, serving him without any ulterior motive of our own. However, um, that's something which we never see, even in material examples at the most um, closest is, is saying like the parent and the child, where, you know, the parent will sacrifice themselves for the sake of the child, but it's still tainted. Um, it's my child, you know, and, and this is me, I be mine, is involved in, in that transaction. And in all material transactions, there's always that element of selfishness. So, how can we aspire for something that we can't even see, we don't understand? Um, and we know that even as we practice bhakti, we're trying to serve our spiritual master and Krishna, uh, and, and there's always something in, in our heart, you know, that we want. We're not free of those desires, so how do we get to that level of uh, purity? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> Follow the process. Pray to Krishna. He's got to bestow that on us ultimately, you know, when he sees our sincerity. And, it, it, you know, it says in the Prabhupada says that we're here in chant with ever increasing sincerity uh, in one purport. So uh, as we engage in the process of especially hearing and chanting, hearing from the pure devotee is the key. And, you know, we've got to do that. To get how do we get pure love? By hearing from someone who's got it. It's the problem because it's like catching the disease. It's a good disease. You know, bhakti comes from bhakti, and the only and someone who has prema can give you prema. Uh, and how do they give it to you? By you've got to hear from them repeatedly, and you know, try to assimilate their their words and their, and you know. And Prabhupada's given us that chance. He's, he's written all his books. So we should really take time to seriously try to hear and discuss and, you know, repeat those, those teachings and gradually it will come by Krishna's grace. He'll give it to you. Yeah? Pass the thing for a sec. I can't, I can't hear, sorry. The Prabhupada always says, be conscious first, then be Krishna conscious. Be conscious first, then be Krishna conscious, right. Yeah, that's also very good advice. I think we probably better stop right. It's gone nine o'clock. You guys must be getting hungry. Uh, thank you very much. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Jai Shri Prabhupada.